Hi everyone, today I'm going to be trying something a little different, um, which is bringing all of you along with me while I solve the problem instead of just looking at the solution. So I'll be going into day four totally blind and yeah, hope to do this in under an hour, but not going for time. Um, so let's get right into it. Yeah, and we're about a day late and <laughs> obviously not going to be on the leaderboard, so no need to rush. We can read what the the story has for us. All right, day four, scratch cards. The gondola takes you up. Strangely, though, the ground doesn't seem to be coming with you. You're not climbing a mountain. As the circle of snow island recedes before you, an entire new landmass suddenly appears above you. The gondola carries you to the surface of the new island and lurches into the station. As you exit the gondola, the first thing you notice is that the air here is much warmer than it was on Snow Island. It's also quite humid. Guess these words are important. <laughs> is this where the water source is? The next thing you notice is an elf sitting on the floor across from the station. What appears to be what seems to be a pile of colorful square cards. Oh, hello. The elf excitedly runs over to you. How may I be of service? You ask about water sources. I'm not sure. I just operate the gondola lift. That does sound like something we'd have, though. This is Island Island, after all. I bet the gardener would know. He's on a different island, though, or the small kind surrounded by water, not the floating kind. We really need to come up with a better naming scheme. Tell you what, if you can help me with something quick, I'll let you borrow my boat and you can go visit the gardener. I've got all these scratch cards as a gift, but I can't figure out what I've won. The elf leads you over to a pile of colorful cards. There you discover dozens of scratch cards, all with their opaque covering already scratched off. Picking one up, it looks like each card is two lists of numbers separated by a vertical bar, a list of winning numbers, and then a list of numbers you have. You organize the information into a table, your puzzle input. As far as the elf has been able to figure out, you have to figure out which of the numbers you have appear in the list of winning numbers. The first match makes the card worth one point, and each match after the first doubles the point value of that card. For example, Five winning numbers. Um, okay, so left is the winning numbers. Got it. So I think what we're going to want to do here is basically obviously find the number of intersections between this, the winning numbers, and um, the numbers you have, and then it's pretty easy to compute from there um, your score, which is just uh, two to the number of matches minus one. All right, let's, uh, let's get into the code. So first I'll Paste the example, just make sure that that got inputted right. Looks like it did. Then I've set up this little command line script uh, or utility watch. Um, what's that? What that's going to do is watch a file, in this case, the day four script that we're working on for any changes. And when there are changes, it'll run this command. In this case, um, we just want to execute the file. Um, use an example. So yeah, this will watch the file and then I'm writing to the file and uh, it'll just run it. So so yeah, this is just sort of a handy little utility inspired by Rust's um, cargo watch um, that I kind of like for writing these scripts. All right, uh, first a little bit of boilerplate. We're gonna parse the uh, the input file. And then open the file.
All right, so now we should have, and looking on the right, it looks like that was imported correctly. Okay, so I think that we're just gonna wanna iterate through the lines and yeah, so we're just returning the total. So we'll set up this uh, initializes total variable to, to count the sum of the scores and then iterate over the lines. All right, on each line, we're then going to need to get the Winnie numbers and your numbers. Um, and so I think, um, definitely multiple ways to do this. Let's use regex just because it's it's good practice. It'd probably be faster to just call line dot split a few times and then cast integers. But this is yeah, the whole point of this is to learn. So. Let's go for it. Um, yeah, so I think we don't know how many winning numbers we have. So it looks like, yeah, there are more than five in the, in the, the real input. So I think I want to call something like find all on the line, and then the pattern will look like I think first we want to get the winning numbers. So that'll be like, um, yeah, let me first see like what this is gonna, Um, okay, so here we're getting all the numbers in the whole line, and the thing we have to do is make sure that we're uh, separating the winning numbers from um, from the, the the numbers we have. So I think first we gotta, let's get the winning numbers first. So let's start with a colon. Um, and then I think we want, this will match any number of characters. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just see how this works. I might need to look up the, <laughs> the documentation for find all. Um, So this is, looks like it's just giving us that final 53. Um, okay, well, I think that just using regex, I'm just not good enough to pull out um, the winning numbers because we don't know how many they're going to be. So if we did know that it was just going to be five, we could do something like, um, and then these uh, make these capture groups. Uh, this is. Uh... Obviously this, yeah, this would like pull out the first four, but we don't know how many of the winning numbers we have. Um, so instead, I'll just use a combination of regular expressions and uh, and using just the, the string dot split, which will definitely work for time. So first we wanna split on this uh, colon and get the, the second half of the string. So that'll be after like the card one 
and then we can split on this uh, vertical bar and get the first half. So this now should we know should be the first five in that string. Um, oops, this is wrong. Yeah, so that looks like it's right. Uh, let's not align to, and then uh, let's do something similar to get your numbers. So instead, I think we can just do split on the vertical bar and get the second half of that. And looks like that is working well. Um, so then let's just do a little looks comprehension to pass these to integers. Although actually we don't need to do that. We can just use strings um, because we don't actually care about the, we care about the number of matches, not like the specific numbers. So now let's cast those both to sets and then find the intersection. Um, equals set dot intersection set. So we're looking at four matches. Um, okay, got it. So that is, looks like it's correct. Um, so now we just need to add to the total. And the value we're adding is the length of matches and then two to the power of the length of matches minus one. So if we have one, um, okay, this, okay. So if we have any matches, if the set is not empty, then we want to add um, two to the power of the length of matches minus one. So what this will do is make sure that if we have one match, then we have two to the power of zero, which is one. And then that'll double each time matches increases. So I think this should be right. Let's just move that break statement and then do um, print out the total. 13, which is indeed correct. So let's get rid of these extra print statements. And yeah, let's now Exit from there and run it on um, the full input, which I realize I haven't gotten. So I'll copy this. And then run it. 24,000. Let's check it out. It should be correct. Nice. All right, continuing to part two. Just as you're about to report your findings to the ELF, one of you realizes that the wheels have actually been printed on the back of every card this whole time. <laughs> There's no such thing as points. Instead, scratch cards only cause you to win more scratch cards equal to the number of winning numbers you have. Okay, interesting. Specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card equal to the number of matches. So if the card 10 were to have five matching numbers, you'd win each copy, you'd want, win one copy each, each of the cards 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Copies of scratch cards are store, scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number or the same card number as the card they copied. So when on a copy of card 10 and it has five matching numbers, then it would win a copy of the same cards that the original 10 had won. Um Okay, this is a little weird. And I think we might have to look through the example. Um, 
Okay. Let's try to understand this. Card one has four matching numbers. I'm going to copy the next four cards. Two through five. Um, This is just a strangely divine problem. Okay, but we can take some time to understand it. All right, so card four, we've got basically an extra of these four. Then card two has two matching numbers, so we have another extra of three and four. So now, including the original, we should have two each of three and four. We had the copy of card two, three also, so we have four copies of three and four. Um, We have four instances of car three and two matching numbers. So now we're adding another four to four. Okay, I think I, I'm seeing what's going on now. Um, so now I have eight copies of card five. We have 14 instances of card five. Okay, and then it's, it's designed such that it'll terminate before the end. Okay. How many total scratch cards do you end up with? Got it, got it. So I think that what we're gonna wanna do is pretty much do the same thing as before. This is not too complicated actually. And um, as we, so as we find the matches, we need to store, like create an additional data structure to store the number of copies of each card. So if there are four matches, then we increment um, like the copy for two to two to five. And then when we like find whatever two matches here, then we increment by two, like by the number of card two. So we can just like traverse downwards. There's no like backtracking involved. Um, but to make that more concrete, let's just implement it. Um, I think that what I'll do is just clean this up. Um, so we have two separate functions for part one and part two, um, which will take just a, just a second. So that's our main function. Then let's create part one function which will take in lines and then just adding some type hints, not totally necessary, but it's kind of nice, I think. Um, and then instead of printing the total here, we'll return it. And then in main, we'll do print out the, the outputs. Yeah, people have other solutions to how they would like sort of design these these problems. In the past, I've had sort of just got very jumbled where when I solved both part one and part two in one section of code. So I've been liking sort of copying over part one to create part two, and then uh, use this nice snippet. Um, And then let's, uh, first let's, I'm not sure if this is the same example. Okay, I, I believe it is. So let's set up that, that watch again. And okay, it looks like, yeah, no errors so far. All right, so in part two, let's create an additional, I think we're no longer gonna have to keep track of the total. We can compute that at the end. Instead, let's create something that has the count of each card. And let's do a dictionary that's indexed by the card number and outputs the number of cards. So we can just use a little, little dict comprehension to create this. Um, yeah. 
So to start out with, we're just going to have a single card for each um, of the card indices, of, for the original cards. And then since everything is indexed with like the plus one, let's just do that here too. And then just get rid of the errors. Let's do this. Um, yeah. So that looks correct. Then in our loop, let's keep track of the index as well. And we'll have to remember that this is, uh, maybe we just don't use the plus one because then we'll have to do it there too. All right, so we still want to do all these same things. Um, yes. So then we, let's get the counts for the current card, which is the card counts i. And get the number of matches, which is just the length of this. So now what we're going to want to do um, is iterate over each of the, the subsequent cards if there are matches. Um, and basically, yeah, we can do Okay, so let me explain that. I think what, what we're doing here, um, and then let's print out the card at the end of this. Yeah, so what we're doing here is basically iterating over, so say we have five matches, the next five cards, and so this would be like, say we, if i is like five and we're iterating over the next five, then this will go over like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're incrementing that by the current count. And the reason we're doing that instead of just by one um, is because the current, we have like, Current count number of um, number of cards. Here, let's uh, let's make that current count. So yeah, I think this should work. And instead of having to keep track of this as we go, we have this data structure that we're creating. So we can just sum over the values, which are the counts. And we get 30, which was correct. All right, let's uh, now run that on the full input. Not big number, it seems quite big, but I guess this, this could kind of blow up. All right, let's... Uh... Nice, nice. So that was correct. Um, yeah, this number seems big, but I guess like as we go through where you've got like this, like if there are 10 matches here and then continuing with on with 10 matches, like the number of cards we get is going to stack up really high. So that's how we get this total number of scratch cards, um, which is cool. Sort of a complicated, I don't know if your average person would be able to figure out if they, how much they want or not. But yeah, um, going back to the code, I think uh, this is pretty clean. Um, we could sort of refactor so that the shared code in part one and part two um, refactor that into a separate function, but it's really quite simple and I don't think we need to do that here. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you've got any comments, questions on why I did things, I'd definitely love to get some comments and discuss more there. All right, thanks for watching again and bye.